very warm welcome to you. This is the International Service of Adventist World Radio in English from Pune. In our program today we have music from Pilgrims and Esther Cynthia. A story for children on family of God. Followed by a nature study on New Jerusalem Foundation. Ending our program with a message from God's word on the topic, a morning meditation. This is your host Sharad and I'm Maureen and you are listening to Adventist World Radio the voice of hope. Let's begin our program with a song by Pilgrims Be thou my vision. You are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope from Pune, India. Before you hear a story on family, we would like to say the nearest thing to heaven on this earth is the home where husband and wife, parents and children live in love and peace together for the Lord and for each other. The nearest thing to hell on earth is an ungodly home. damaged by sin and iniquity where parents quarrel and bicker and children are abandoned to the devil and all the forces of wickedness in the wisdom of god the family is the smallest complete unit of society on the earth as goes the family so goes the nation and civilization and the world no nation has ever risen higher morally intellectually spiritually than the families which that nation was constituted all efforts therefore at improving moral and spiritual standards in the world combating crime infidelity and violence must begin with the home and with the family attacking these problems anywhere else anywhere farther down the line 
can only be temporary. It can only restrain but never result in a cure. Until the homes of our nation, and that means first of all the parents of our nation, turn to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. our country will deteriorate morally and spiritually. Dear listener, the home is the building block of society. Here's a nice story told by our friend Sophia. Of marriage, my wife wanted me to take another woman out to dinner and a movie. She said, I love you, but I know this other woman who loves you and would love to spend some time with you. The other woman my wife wanted me to visit was my mother, who has been a widow for 19 years. But the demands of my work and my three children had made it possible to visit her only occasionally. That night, I called to invite her to go out for dinner and a movie. What's wrong? Are you well? She asked. My mother is a type of woman who suspects that a late night call or a surprise invitation is a sign of bad news. I thought it would be pleasant to spend some time with you, I responded. Just the two of us. She thought about it for a moment and then said, I would like that very much. That Friday after work, as I drove over to pick her up, I was a bit nervous. When I arrived at her house, I noticed that she too seemed to be nervous about our date. She waited in the door with her coat on. She had curled her hair and was wearing the dress that she had worn to celebrate her last wedding anniversary. She smiled from a face that was as radiant as an angel's. I told my friends I was going out with my son. They were impressed, she said as she got into the car. They can't wait to hear about our meeting. We went to a restaurant that, although not elegant, was very nice and cozy. My mother took my arm as if she were the first lady. After we sat down, I had to read the menu. Her eyes could only read large print. Halfway through the entries, I lifted my eyes and saw my mom sitting there staring at me. A nostalgic smile was on her lips. It was I who used to have to read the menu when you were small, she said. Then, it's time that you relax and let me return the favor, I responded. During the dinner, we had an agreeable conversation. Nothing extraordinary, but catching up on recent events in each other's life. We talked so much that we missed the movie. As we arrived at her house later, she said, I'll go out with you again, but only if you let me invite you. I agreed. How was your dinner date? Asked my wife when I got home. Very nice, much more than I could have imagined, I answered. A few days later, my mother died of a massive heart attack. It happened so suddenly that I didn't have a chance to do anything for her. Sometime later, I received an envelope with a copy of a restaurant receipt from the same place mother and I had dined. An attached note said, I paid this bill in advance. I wasn't sure that I could be there, but nevertheless, I paid for two plates, one for you and other for your wife. You will never know what that night meant for me. I love you, son. At that moment, I understood the importance of saying, in time, I love you, and to give your loved ones the time they deserve. Dear friends, nothing in life is more important than our family. Give them the time they deserve, because these things cannot be put off until some other time. Thank you, Sophia, for sharing a nice story on Adventist World Radio for our listeners. And now, before you hear a song, here's a nature talk on New Jerusalem Foundation by Tina. Dear friend, I'm glad to share a nature study on New Jerusalem Foundations. Today we will talk about the six foundation stones that God will use in the walls of the New Jerusalem. Some of these precious stones are more common than others. Jasper is a mixture of quartz and iron oxide. It comes in many colors such as green, yellow, brown, black and red. Sapphires come from corundum and are usually blue in color. The deeper the blue, the more expensive the sapphires are. There are other sapphires that are called the pink sapphire, the oriental emerald, the oriental topaz and the oriental amethyst, named after the town of Chalcedon in Turkey, where these gems were found. Chalcedony has been referred to as 
thunder eggs there are many varieties of these gems which has also been called the white agate because it is semi transparent to translucent with spots and circles petrified wood has deposits of chalcedony in it in large sizes emeralds are almost as expensive as diamonds because they are very rare they are usually from a pale to a rich green in color and have a six sided form they are a type of beryl which is usually found in a rocky substance with many layers of pegmatis a variety of agate which is a form of quartz or chalcedony usually cut flat from layers of banded masses of agate this is the cheapest of the gems and used widely in jewelry sardius orange red in color comes from the iron compounds of chalcedony that permeate the colloidal silica today known as carnelian it is used extensively in jewelry mohammed is said to have used it in a ring to seal his important papers dear friend why will god use these precious stones in foundations you ask why why not because he made them and he wants the best for his children the streets will be pure gold so why not foundations of precious stones god is a lover of beauty and these gems are beautiful seek him today and ask him to help you enjoy that beauty forever thank you tina for being with us on awr we have a text that speak about new foundation stones in the book of revelation chapter 21 verses 19 and 20 which describes like this the foundation stones of the city wall were adorned with all kinds of precious stones first the foundation stone was jasper the second sapphire the third a gate the fourth emerald the fifth onyx sixth carnelian the seventh yellow quartz the eighth beryl the ninth topaz the tenth chalcedony the eleventh turquoise the twelfth amethyst time to hear a song by esther cynthia i must tell jesus
must tell Jesus I must tell Jesus He all my cares and sorrows will share I must tell Jesus I must tell Jesus I cannot bear my burdens alone I must tell Bible theme today is a morning meditation. This will be presented by Sharat. Dear listener, why does the Bible and the Psalms in particular mention morning so often? The Old Testament employs two main Hebrew terms for morning. Bokhar, referring mainly to a moment of time, the daybreak, and Sachar, designating the first reddish light at early dawn. A quick study of each is both spiritually and theologically enriching. Dear listener, I have four short points to share with you. Number one, meditation is associated with the dynamic of life. The dawn transitions us from rest to action, as if at daybreak there is an explosion of life on the planet, nature is renewed. Humans work the fields, build, go on journeys, go to war, and submit to God's will for them. In the morning, human life is energized, reactivated. It is a new beginning. But this is possible only because God is also fully active in the morning. His love and compassion are new every morning. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 23. We have this promise there that He is His love and His compassion is new every morning. The New Testament tells us that something glorious and unique happened in the morning. Jesus walked out of the tomb alive. Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. Because of Him, the morning is ever associated with life and light. The second point is, dear listener, meditation is associated with time of worship. Since the morning is associated with life, it was considered to be the time when God's people were to worship Him. Since we read, in the morning I lay my requests before you and wait in expectations. Psalms chapter 5 verse 3. The psalmist praises the Lord and proclaims His love in the morning. When the temple priests offered the morning sacrifice and the nation collectively worshipped the Lord. But the morning was also a time for worship at home. New beginnings were moments for the rededication of the family to the Lord. Thirdly, dear listener, meditation is associated with with God as judge. It is in the morning that God reveals His justice. He commanded 
the king to administer justice every morning. Jeremiah chapter 21 verse 12. The oppressed suffered during the night, but they looked forward to the morning when the king would judge and vindicate them. This image is applied to God as universal judge who is righteous. He does not know wrong. Morning by morning, he dispenses his justice and every new day he does not fail. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 5 The morning is therefore the time when God examines and judges us in order to vindicate and deliver us to grant sinners what they legally deserve. Lastly, dear listener, meditation is associated with the ends of the darkness of the night. Evil could rule during the night, but it comes to an end in the morning. In darkness, immoral behavior is practiced. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 18 And God's enemies plot against his people. But it is also during the night that God defeats them, thus identifying the morning as the moment when his saving power is revealed. Of course, biblical writers knew that weeping may remain for a night. But they also understood that rejoicing comes in the morning. Psalms chapter 30 verse 5 They were acquainted with the complexity of human existence, yet they could still say, I will sing of your strength in the morning. I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. Psalms 59 verse 16 The phrase in the morning became an expression of hope and trust in the Lord in the midst of trials. The phrase in the morning points towards a time when there will be a new beginning made possible through the resurrection of Jesus, when life will flourish in all its beauty and glory, when humans will be able to sing praises to the Lord and to worship Him as the very source of life. It also points to the time when the night of sin and death will end as the dawn of the consummation of our salvation becomes a reality. It will be a morning when God's work of judgment will be vindicated, His people and renew His creation. This will happen when Jesus, the bright morning star, appears. Revelation chapter 22 verse 16 Dear listener, the Bible urges us to live for Christ and be prepared for either event. Peter wrote, The end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. Have fervent love for one another. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 7 to 10 Dear listener, Jesus said, Be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Dear listener, as Christians, we need not panic as we see our time slipping away. Instead, let's live every moment for Christ and be prepared to meet him today. Dear listener, be ready for your last moment by being ready every moment. May God bless you. Let's pray. Our loving Father, we come to the throne of thy grace with praise and honor. Kindly accept us as we are. Accept our worship. Accept our praise. May we learn to praise you and worship you every morning as you show each day, each new day for us in our lives. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Thank you, Sharath, for sharing God's word. The pen of inspiration says in Psalms chapter 9, verse 2, I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Dear friend, whatever your circumstances may be today, let Psalms 9, verse 2 encourage you to praise the name of the Lord. Be thou my vision. 
With this we have almost come to the end of our broadcast to learn more on God's word we would love to receive your letters on Adventist World Radio Post Box number 17 Pune 411001 Maharashtra India You could also email us on amc3 at vsnl.com You may also follow us on our website awr.org/englishprogram This is Mori And I'm sure of your host signing out from Adventist World Radio. Thank you for joining us today. Do join us again. Until then, we wish you goodbye and God bless you.